Hi everyone, Kat here. Welcome to my channel. Today I chose this lemon to paint that, that is so easy you don't even have to draw it first. I got the picture off of Unsplash from Francesco Cantinelli. We're going to be studying light and shadow and that's how you're going to paint this, this picture. Um, I, that's a viewfinder that I made out of cardboard, white cardboard, and it helps to isolate these small areas on a photo so that you can see the light and shadow better. Now on my paper I'm using Canson Monval. Uh, I have four little pencil dots one on the top bottom and side to side. Now all you need to do when you're looking at that photo I'll, I'll put the, the, uh, the uh, link down below is you'll notice that the wall is darker than the lemon even though it's all in yellow, that's why I chose that photo. Um, so that you see the subtle differences in, in, in light and in shadow. And so by painting this slightly darker wall, just painting around the lemon, you are going to see a lemon emerge just right before your very eyes. You do not have to draw it. You just have to connect those rounded, those dots that you drew, just connect it slightly rounded, like, like a lemon shape, just, sli just like a slight rounded line. And right now I'm dropping in very wet paint and I'm softening the edges with a lot of water on my brush, not dripping, but a lot. As you can see, I'm moving, I'm picking up my paper to allow the paint to flow naturally. And I chose this bluey green instead of the yellow wall just for um, interest just just for because I like that color and I didn't want to do a, a, a painting all in yellow so now if you look at back at the photo you'll see that the back of the lemon is darker and that's because the light is coming from the right side and is causing the shadow, a shadow on to the left side of the lemon. So there we go. There we go. So I'm doing the same thing on the bottom of the lemon. I'm establishing a slight shadow because the lemon is casting a shadow. And again, I'm just adding in the colors that I like. It's like a bluey green I mixed. I think it was ultramarine blue and some lemon yellow, I believe. And I just kind of varied the, the amount of paint I used in each, in each mix. And there we go, just dropping it in. and you try to allow it to flow as best you can. And when it dries, it really leaves a nice, pretty um, effect. You know, I, I didn't, I, when, when we get farther and farther into our, our lessons, we're gonna be using salt and saran and uh, or plastic wrap or, and, uh, but for now you can do this all with your brush and water. Okay, so now on to the shadow, the shadow, the lemon, the shadow on the lemon. Okay. If you don't see light and you don't see shadow, you wouldn't see anything because everything we look at becomes apparent to us through light and shadow. Now you'll notice on this lemon that the back part is the left part is in shadow and there's a very, very white spot where the light is strongest. That's the most round part of the lemon that's hitting the light. It's the closest to the light. So what you do in watercolor is you leave this white on your paper. So I'm putting in my first layer of lemon. It's pretty concentrated back here because we work in layers and you start with your lightest layer, but this area is going to get darker and darker as we go. And as I come towards the front, I'm just, 
I've got more water on my brush and less paint. And as you, you're going to see, I'm going to try and respect that little oval shape that you see in the photo of the light bouncing off the lemon. There, you see I'm isolating it there so you can see it. And then I'm going to soften it out. There you go. <laughs> and suddenly a lemon emerges and you have not drawn one line. So you do not know, have to know how to draw to paint. I mean, it does come in handy, but I don't like pencil lines showing through my paint. Some people love it. Uh, I personally don't like it. So I try to draw as little as possible, even when it's someone's face, when I'm doing a portrait, I do not like to have any detail. I don't like anything showing through my painting. So now here I'm taking the next darkest yellow. That's my Indian yellow in this set. And I'm adding it to the part of the lemon that's in shadow because we've got to get this area darker. And there's that little, I don't know what you call that little guy on a on a on a lemon <laughs> the nib or whatever I don't know what it is yeah there we go just smoothing out the paint dropping it in my lemon is still wet so it's important to to just dab the paint and try not to brush because it will leave streaks and if your painting is starting to dry, do not keep painting. Let it dry and start all over again, like, like re-wet the whole surface. I'll tell you when I dry. So now I'm adding in a complementary color. So if you have your color wheel, you'll know that purple is the complementary color of yellow. So I'm adding a little bit of that in and it creates like, um, like a, I guess like a brownie sort of peachy color. Um, depending on the amounts you used. So as you can see now, this lemon is really going to start taking shape. There we go. I'm dropping it in because my paper is still wet and I don't want streaks. So I'm trying to drop in the color and let watercolor do its thing. Sometimes you get beautiful, beautiful. Some people call them happy accidents, but I think that's what watercolor is all about. It just sort of flows freely. And in this case, like if that, if you want to do that, just use more water and more paint at the same time. I'm using a very light hand here. Just the tip of my brush really is, is, is touching the lemon and I'm using a very light um, amount of paint. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. Now I'm adding in that straight purple and that's for the uh, where you would pick the lemon off the stem. So I'm just trying to now look, voila, you have a lemon already and you haven't drawn anything. So now we're looking at how dark those values need to get. You remember in our last video, we talked about values. So we need to darken these up in order for the light ones to stand out. Okay. What am I doing here? There we go. Yep. Adding more purple now. I added this directly onto the lemon because watercolor is transparent. You will see the yellow underneath that purple. So that purple will never look purple. It will always um, mix with the yellow and it'll like purple and yellow cancel each other out and they kind of make a neutral brownie peachy color. Just adding more shadows. And you know, once you learn light and shadow and value, you are going to look at the world totally differently. You're going to, every time you walk 
as you're walking to work, as you're sitting in your backyard, or as you're doing the groceries, you're going to look at items and you're going to look for the light and you're going to look for the shadow. And, you know, if you do that and it really intrigues you, go home and try to paint it. It doesn't matter if it's a can of soup or if it's a banana or what, it doesn't matter what the object is, a leaf. Everything is light and shadow and that gives everything definition. So let me know in the comments if you notice that that happens, that's happening to you. I'm, I'm really curious because it, it happened to me. It's been happening to me my whole life. <laughs> so let me know how it goes. Okay, so here I find the lemon doesn't look quite, it's not, um, the color isn't intense enough. It's a little faded and, and that's okay because we work in layers. So I'm adding a mixture of my lemon yellow and my Indian yellow. Uh, and I'm not trying to to overdo it, but I do have to give the front of this lemon a little more definition because even though it's in the light, it still is a rounded object, so the, the edges are darker. So I do have to add, and I found, like I said, I found it a little too pale. So here I'm glazing over the whole lemon to add some yellow to it all while respecting this, this, uh, the lightest spot of the lemon where the light is reflecting off of it. And the best thing to do is do this when your paint is dry. Now, because of the paper, paper I'm using, it was already dry. I didn't have to use a blow dryer, but if you're using a cotton paper or if you've used more water than I did, you make sure it's dry before you do this glazing layer. A glaze is just an even layer of color over a thin layer of color over your painting. Watercolor is so good for your soul. It's good for your health. It's good. It, I mean, I really truly hope that you're getting involved in it as much as you can and you're enjoying it as much as I do. And try not to stress about the outcome. Just enjoy it. You, I mean, to lose yourself in, a, in, in an activity for, even if it's only 20 minutes, you can reduce your stress. So I really encourage you to, to or if you don't want to paint a lemon, just paint anything. Just throw paint on a paper and play and let the water flow and let the paint bleed into each other. All the colors bleed into each other and see what happens. So there I'm just adding purple to the little stem or where you would pick the, the lemon off the stem of the tree. So now I'm thinking about my shadows and just looking to see if they're dark enough. And I went and I dried it. I dried it completely and watercolor dries lighter always. So you sometimes will look at it, take a look at it and say, Oh, I thought I put more paint on than that. And, uh, it, but you did, you did. It just dries lighter. So here I'm adding a little more of the purple, a little bit of purple in the yellow. You don't want it too, too dark because then it starts to, it doesn't look like the lemon anymore if you do it too, too dark. But try it. Try and see what happens, you know. You, you learn from playing. And here now I'm considering, I'm looking at the, um, the shadows that need to be cast. So I want to make sure that's totally dry before I do that. I think before I do the shadows though, I do one more glaze over the lemon using a mixture of the lemon yellow and the Indian yellow. You can see that one is cool and one is, is more red. It's warm, it's a warm yellow. When you put a glaze over your painting, um, it harmonizes the painting, I guess is the right word. It smooths things over without, you're not actually moving any paint. You've just harmonized, that's the, that's the word that comes to mind. And so that's all I'm doing here, is my one final glaze.
and now I'm going to be putting in a dark shadow. So I'm using uh, this blue color and I believe I'm adding some of my yellow into it to make it ends up being I have a stronger blue uh, content so it ends up being like a greeny blue color it's quite nice it's kind of my, like my favorite color <laughs> um, so the part that's closest to the lemon is the shadow is going in shadow is going to be the darkest part so that's what we're going to work on first so you're going to put the darkest paint right 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 beneath the lemon and then you go straight out and that's the shadow cast from the rest of the lemon and the reason that is so dark is because that's that's the part that's closest to the table the part of the lemon that's closest to the table but look at that, just by adding this, I'm not finished, but just by adding this, now it grounds it. You can see that it's actually sitting somewhere. If I didn't do that, it would just look like it's floating in, air, in the air, which I guess is okay. It's a style, it's a technique, but this is good to practice. Now I'm just softening the edges a little bit. I thought it looked a little bit too hard. So I'm wetting my brush and, and taking out most of the water and then I'm just tickling the edges to soften them. And I used a little, I always have a towel in my hand or a Kleenex and I just dab up little bits of extra paint that I don't want there. That's always, always in my left hand. So here I'm darkening that shadow. It's still not quite dry, so but it's okay that I that I go in at this stage because it's damp. Otherwise, if it's like I said before, if it's not, if it's that in between stage, like if it's almost dry but not quite, don't touch it because it will it, it will be streaky. Okay, there we go, darkening again because I kind of lost some of the darkness before. And now I'm softening that part. Just tickling it with the, with the tip of my brush, a damp brush, and you see, you can see the painting, the, excuse me, you can see the paint just bleeding out a little bit. It's always attracted to the water. So now that the shadow is all complete, I take a step back and I have a look and I decided that it needed a little bit of color. So I chose to splatter and splattering is when you add some water to your brush and you add some paint and you just flick away. So a lot of people, watercolorists do this. They do it for expression. They do it for texture. Um, if you're doing like a rugged kind of painting, a landscape, it, it helps to add texture to your painting. Um, you can do it in any instance, but I'm just doing it here to add interest and to have fun. So you fill your brush up with water and you dip it in your paint so it's pretty watery and then you flick it. You flick your, your brush like you're pretending you're smoking a cigarette and you just flick it. <laughs> And co I covered the lemon because I didn't want too many spots on it. And that's a cute little lemon. That's what we're finished. That's what we finished with. So if you look at the photo, you'll see that's what we started with. And that's what we ended up with. And that's not bad. And you didn't draw one line. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Happy watercoloring! Bye-bye!